Okay, good morning. Thank, thank you very much. It's really a pleasure to be here, and I, I personally want to thank Jan for inviting us to this meeting. Um, terrific opportunity, and, and thank you very much, Dr. Whitaker, for the, the excellent transition and mentioning the IntelliPort system. I want to actually begin with a, a little disclaimer here <clears throat> that the IntelliPort system is um, FDA cleared in the U.S. for perioperative use, not just in the OR, but also in pre-op and PACU. It's not yet, um, we have not yet pursued nor received the CE mark, and as was already mentioned, I'm an employee of BD, and, and I <clears throat> wanted to include this disclosure not for legal reasons, but just to set the record straight up front that this isn't going to be a sales presentation, that this technology is not yet available here. And my purpose is to make you aware of the fact that it exists and to take this opportunity to gain feedback from people here about improvements that we can possibly make as we look to bring this technology outside of the US and into other countries. What I'm going to cover is I'm going to walk you through an overview of the system. overview of the system, talk about some of the clinical challenges that the system seeks to address, how the system works, and talk at the end about uh, encoded syringes. This is a picture, and this is the same one that Dr. Whitaker showed, that shows two of the, the major, two of the three major subsystems of the IntelliBoard system. There's a smart IV wireless injection site, we call the B IntelliPort injection site, and a tablet display. I'm gonna show you, begin by showing you a video, an overview video, it's about two minutes, and it can cover a lot more information than I can cover in a handful of slides. So let me begin with that, and uh, then I'll go into the system in more detail. The IntelliPort system is an innovative medication management solution for IV bolus injections. The system consists of an intelligent injection port and software that identifies the medication and concentration contained in a syringe, checks for drug allergies, measures the dose administered, captures the time of the event, and then automatically records this information in the patient's electronic medical record. There are three main components to the IntelliPort system. The IntelliPort injection site, a port that uses wireless communication and an industry standard lure fitting for compatibility with commonly used Y-sites, stopcocks, and IV tubing sets. The IntelliPort tablet, a display that provides real-time information during medication administration. And the IntelliPort gateway, a software server that supports direct IT integration with existing hospital information systems. When an IntelliPort encoded syringe is attached, the system immediately displays its medication and concentration on the tablet, while audibly announcing the information as a secondary confirmation. Propofol, 10 milligrams per milliliter. Clinicians deliver IV bolus medications using their usual techniques and may observe the dose being measured and recorded in real time on the IntelliPort tablet. The IntelliPort system checks medications against drug allergies listed in the patient's medical record, enabling it to alert the clinician to an allergy before the drug is delivered. When a drug allergy is detected by the system, lights on the injection site are illuminated and an audible alert is announced. Allergy. The tablet also displays an alert message containing additional information about the patient's drug allergy, its severity, and the anticipated reaction. The IntelliPort system's allergy alerts provide users with important real-time information, but the system does not prevent clinicians from delivering the medications they wish to administer. The system also works with unencoded syringes, such as those used to draw medication from a vial at the point of care. When an unencoded syringe is attached, the tablet automatically displays a user-defined list of frequently used medications, 
allowing the user to select the appropriate medication and concentration in the syringe. Once selected, the IntelliPort system provides all of the same dose measurement, alerting, and documentation features as it does for encoded syringes. The IntelliPort Medication Management System offers real-time medication identification, dose measurement, allergy alert, and automated documentation at the point of injection. So I'd like to highlight a few of the things that, um, key features that you saw that the system is capable of. Uh, it automatically identifies the drug and concentration while you're connecting the syringe. It audibly announces it for confirmation purposes. It provides real-time dose measurement while you're administering the medication to the patient. It provides real-time allergy alerts. <clears throat> And it also provides fully automated medication administration documentation. And I'm going to talk about modes of operation and how it works with both whether using a paper anesthesia record or an electronic system has the capability of working with both. <clears throat> We've very deliberately designed this technology to be complementary to electronic medical record systems. And in the US, um, the High Tech Act that was enacted a couple of years ago along with meaningful use, has really driven the adoption of electronic medical records. And in fact, anesthesia is probably one of the last places in the hospital today that paper records still exist, but that's quickly going away and there's a rapid movement towards um, anesthesia information systems. <clears throat> you saw the injection site. The injection site is actually wireless and mobile, and it's designed so that um, a component of it, the disposable flow sensor, has a memory chip inside that, through some simple steps, is associated with the patient, and their medical record number, and then that port can move across care areas with that patient, and any injections given into that port will automatically be routed to that patient's record. And I was, I don't know if it was mentioned earlier, but I actually was one of the founders of the company that um, had helped create the IntelliPort. And the original concept that we were going after was not anesthesia. It was really conceived of um, as we were working on coming up with a solution for cardiac arrest. That we began working with some doctors in emergency care who recognized the challenges that scribes have and others during cardiac arrest. And we were trying to think of, conceive of some type of technology that you could put in a crash cart and use with pre-filled syringes that in the event of uh, you know, <clears throat> a code blue situation, you could quickly attach this port to the line where you wanted to give medication, begin giving medications, and it would automatically capture what you're doing until you could get a recording system up. And that's why, in addition to what you've seen in the video, the, <clears throat> the port itself actually has memory in it. So you can deliver administrations to the patient during care transition. You, can, you could um, <clears throat> have a nurse put the port on in the pre-op area, give those initial drugs. When they come into the OR, that information from the port will automatically be downloaded into the anesthesia record. <clears throat> so it captures those events. It's also designed because we support both paper and electronic medical record systems. <clears throat> if you're in a hospital that is currently using paper records, but you have a plan to move to electronic record keeping system, you can get started with a system in a mode that creates a, a flow sheet. I'll show you a picture of it in just a moment. And then when you move to an electronic record keeping system, there are no changes in hardware, software, anything. It's basically we reconfigure the system and we restart it up and it converts over to the other mode. So um, not two different systems. <clears throat> you may have noticed in the video, and I'm gonna spend a little bit more time later in the presentation talking about encoded syringes. And what we've done is we've taken the concept of barcoded med administration and that technology, of course, has been around and is the standard of care in nursing areas, at least in the United States, and has been for many, many years. And it certainly could be used in the OR and in anesthesia, and the reason it's not is because it's cumbersome, it requires extra workflow steps, and we've developed this technology in such a way that 
it eliminates those. And you get all the benefits of um, barcoded med administration as a byproduct of your natural workflow of picking up a syringe, connecting it to a port, and delivering the medication. <clears throat> It also mentioned in the video that there is a, a gateway. This is a software application that runs in the back end <clears throat> that is care area agnostic. So even though we, we began thinking about this in terms of cardiac arrest a few years back when we partnered with BD, we decided to transition into um, the perioperative space first. But that's not the sole focus of this. We really believe that this is a much broader technology um, we're, we're already working on uh, expansion into critical care nursing areas. We're just completing a study right now. We had already done a lot of research on cardiac arrest, but other ED applications. And we see this over time moving into other area of the, areas of the hospital. <clears throat> so we've designed the back end to support easy expansion. <clears throat> What are the clinical challenges we're trying to address? Well, Dr. Whitaker, I think, already did an excellent job of summarizing some of the, the literature on patient safety. The diagram shown over to the left is the same study that he had referenced. It had mentioned the fact that there were um, one in 20 injections had an error. What you might not have added up is that it was about 10 injections per procedure on average, resulting in an error of you know, one every other surgery. And there's a lot of debate about these numbers, but what I don't think there's any debate about is the fact that this unique situation of having anesthesiologists often in very stressful situations carry the role of prescribing, dispensing, um, preparing the medications, administering them, and documenting them is prone to error. And there are technologies and there are things that we can do to, uh, to improve that, and this, this system is one of them. There's also been an emerging field of um, <clears throat> devices that began in the U.S. and now it's beginning to move into other places of syringe labeling system. These are automated uh, tabletop systems that you use during the filling process to scan the vial. It will automatically announce the medication, um, give you a visual of what the label will be. It'll print out a label with all the information um, for you to put on the syringe barrel. And and these systems are good, but they, <clears throat> but they don't get at all the problems. They're very good at preventing things like um, vial pick errors, but once you've filled all your syringes and you've got them laying out on the table, it doesn't prevent you from picking up the wrong drug. It doesn't stop you from giving the wrong dose. And we've really worked on developing what we believe to be a much more comprehensive solution in the IntelliPort. <clears throat> and in addition to patient safety, there are some other key benefits of the system, and, and one of them is data accuracy. <clears throat> that our research and analysis has shown that in the current world of retrospective charting in anesthesia, that most anesthesia records <clears throat> consist of nice round dose numbers and sort of textbook time sequences that are not perfectly accurate. And, and I'm not suggesting that in most cases that inaccuracy has any clinical relevance, but in this area as we move closer and closer into clinical decision support, that inability to know exactly what drugs were given, exactly in what doses and exactly at what time is gonna be a rate limiting factor in where we can take this. <clears throat> so the ability to have an automated system that's actually capturing that information automatically getting exact dose, exact time, et cetera, opens doors for a lot of clinical decision support, improvement in closed loop drug systems, better understanding of pharmacology of certain drugs and other things. And finally, there's the workflow efficiency component of it. We have a, um, a little demo system that's set up in the exhibit area and I'd invite people afterwards to come take a look. And after we go through a few simple steps to, uh, to do this association, you can just deliver meds and you know give a whole procedure worth of IV bolus injections without ever touching a pen, a mouse, or a keyboard. It is fully automated. It just frees up time for you to, to focus on patient care. <clears throat> so let me get a little more detailed into how the system works. I mentioned previously there's two modes of operation. One of them is a paper mode, and in the paper mode, 
the user interface on the tablet displays a flow sheet just like an anesthesia information system would that has drugs on the vertical, time on the horizontal. <clears throat> Each time you administer a dose, it automatically captures that information, populates it into <clears throat> the time-based plot, over on the right hand side, it adds up the total for each drug. And at the end of the procedure, you can either print this document out, you can PDF it, mail it into an electronic document system, et cetera. It is essentially a replacement for the upper half um, of a paper anesthesia record. It also, by the way, provides the ability to easily add um, it, infusions and delivery of other fluids, drugs given through other routes, et cetera, so you can capture that whole piece. <clears throat> What we really see as the growth opportunity the, in the U.S. right now and the future in other places as well is what we call EMR integrated mode. And this is where the system is a companion to an existing electronic medical record system. <clears throat> where that is the system of record and anytime you would give a drug, it captures the real-time information and as soon as it has all the information, it packages up that information sends it over into the patient's record and automatically populates into the flow sheet. <clears throat> and we have uh, partnership relationships with uh, the two largest EMR vendors in the US are Epic and Cerner. <clears throat> we have great partnerships with both of them and we've got others in the pipeline. Integration with this IntelliPort system is a standard component of Epic Anesthesia's 2015 release and we're working on finishing up the development with Cerner right now, so we'll be part of their 2016 anesthesia release. In terms of the architecture, <clears throat> I mentioned in the, the early picture, there are two main components. There's the IntelliPort injection sites, there's the tablet, and the third piece of it is the gateway. And the gateway not only serves as a coordination engine across the different components of the system, but also manages interfaces with external hospital information systems. Each tablet will simultaneously support up to three IntelliPorts on a patient at a time. So <clears throat> you could have one uh, IntelliPort on you know, a peripheral line, another one on a central line. Some anesthesiologists like to use manifolds. They might be giving drugs through one port, leave a propofol syringe connected to another that they're giving pushes on now and then. So the system provides a lot of flexibility, up to three ports per tablet, one tablet per patient care location, and up to 300 patient care locations per gateway. <clears throat> so that certainly is beyond what you would use just for surgery, but again, we've designed the system for easy expansion into other care areas. A little more detail on the interfaces. On the inbound side for <clears throat> hospitals that have electronic record systems, <clears throat> excuse me, we currently support um, input electronic interfaces for patient demographic and allergy information. And we also have partnerships with um, drug reference library companies like First Data Bank and Maltum that provide formulary information and well-validated rule sets for contraindication checking. <clears throat> and we wanna be using the same type of allergy checking and other rules in the IntelliPort system that the hospital is using in their own pharmacy for CPOE and for order review, et cetera. On the outbound side, we send medication administration events one at a time as they get completed, including all of the five rights information um, to outside partners. Our focus um, thus far has been integration with large um, hospital information sy system companies like Epic and Cerner, but we're also working to develop a standard interface. In fact, we're working with a, an international standards organization called IHE to come up with a standard for this new class of technology that will enable us to also send that information to device companies. So for example, a number of the uh, anesthesia companies have, anesthesia device companies have asked if we can send us, send them our data for closed loop systems and for other purposes. And that's definitely something we wanna make available. <laughs> Let me go a little bit deeper into the injection site. The injection site has two primary components. There is a single patient use um, 
sterile consumable flow sensor. And then there is a reusable, rechargeable, cleanable uh, device we call the base. When these two pieces are clipped together, that activates the device, will initiate on the tablet a simple sequence of a couple touches. Again, I can demonstrate it out there for how you do the patient association. And then you're automatically connected and you can begin giving medications. I'd like to highlight, this is a black diagram, looking a little deeper at the components of the IntelliPort injection site. And I'd like to just highlight a few of the <clears throat> key pieces here. <clears throat> the blue part down here, this is the base. This is the flow sensor. This is obviously a syringe here. The flow sensor, and I'm, the, in the next slide, I'm going to share a little bit more detail on the technology uses ultrasound to measure the flow. And we calculate the drug dosage by using the concentration of the drug times the measured fluid volume. It uses two piezoelectric crystals. There is a stainless steel tube that runs between the crystals that has an inside diameter that is roughly the same size as an 18 gauge needle. Whoops. That is electrically connected when the base and flow sensor are attached together um, to the base. And inside of each one of these flow sensors, even though they are disposables, each one contains a memory chip with a unique serial number in it. And that is actually one of the, the key innovations of the IntelliPort system is many other devices that integrate with hospital information systems have, there is a risk factor that if you don't break the association properly, that you can somehow move that device to another patient and have data flowing into the wrong record, or you can misassociate it and not have the data flowing anywhere. <clears throat> we learned a lot of lessons through that and have come up with an approach that's very different, that um, completely eliminates that risk, that you can't start the system unless you have this, the association done. And when you're done, you throw away the consumable, and that serial number can never be used again. So that during the manufacturing process, it's ensured that every flow sensor has a unique serial number, and the system checks to ensure that it's never repeated. <clears throat> and then inside the base, um, certainly has a microprocessor, has a wireless transmitter, um, and a rechargeable battery. It also has a camera and some optics which are used for reading the, um, the barcode information when you attach the syringe. I mentioned that the approach to the fluid measurement is based on ultrasound. <clears throat> this technology is um, not new. <clears throat> the idea of taking two piezoelectric crystals, having a stainless steel tube run between them, you send signals in one direction, read them with the other crystal, send them in the other direction, read them with the other crystal. And based on, since the sound waves are traveling through the fluid, there is a phase shift caused when there is fluid flow within the tube and measuring the distance between those is an indication of, of what the flow rate is. What I will say is that I believe that BD has really pushed the envelope of <clears throat> flow measurement. This type of work has been these types of flow sensors have been used in other applications for a long time, but this has certainly been one of the most challenging things to make it work, and uh, it's exciting that we've been able to accomplish <clears throat> what we have clinically here. I'd like to share, too, some of the other um, technology development challenges that we have experienced over the, the many years we've been working on this. Number one is achieving viable cost and size. And when, when we, myself and my three other colleagues had started the company and were out raising money with venture capitalists, I don't know how many times I was asked the question, well, if this is such a good idea, you know, why hasn't someone done it before? And the reality is there are many people who have thought of this before. <clears throat> and continue to run into people and hear, yeah, you know, I was thinking of that. In fact, many people worked on it. And I don't want to call it dumb luck, but I will say that we happen to be in the right place at the right time 
when the technologies that go into this finally got small enough and cheap enough to make it economically viable for hospitals. And our partnership, you know, and now we've, we've since been acquired by Becton Dickinson, is another piece that makes that possible because BD's capabilities in making consumable parts like these flow sensors in very high volumes at very low cost is fundamental to making, bringing this technology to market. <clears throat> so <clears throat> getting to that cost, getting to that size was critical. And another thing I, I want to share that I'm really excited about is the technology we have today is already pretty exciting. And this, we really view this as first generation technology and a capability where these ports we would expect to get smaller, less powerful, more capable over time. Um, but we've got a great product to bring to the market <clears throat> um, in this first revision. Another big challenge was dynamic flow range. And I'm going to hold off on this one. I have a couple slides coming up right after this. I'll share more about it. <clears throat> and then, of course, fluid measurement accuracy. Fluid measurement accuracy, I'll bring this together with uh, temperature range, breadth of drugs, fluid viscosity, that for our US FDA submission alone, we had to run over 3,000 tests using actual drugs in hospitals, alternating using different sensors, different bases, different drugs at different temperatures, with different viscosities, and collect mountains of data. And getting all of that within a tight, consistent envelope where we could consistently deliver on this, the uh, accuracy specifications, which I'll share in a moment, um, <clears throat> was a real challenge. Syringe encoding and the optics was another piece of it. Took a lot of work and timing. And also robust wireless connectivity that <clears throat> this was another thing that, you know, we just knew that in order for this technology to be successful, that the wireless had to be very robust. And as part of our testing <clears throat> and submission for the FDA, we not only had to test this with a lot of other wireless devices available, but also in the presence of electrocautery and other <clears throat> um, RF emitting equipment. So we, we feel it's really good there. And then, of course, there's all the other little things that come along with handling, usability, weight, battery life, etc. <clears throat> so on the flow piece, as we started getting into this, <clears throat> One of the characteristics of, of the technology is that the size of the crystals, the length of the tube, the diameter of the tube, the frequency you run it at, all of these physical and electrical characteristics determine the optimal range at which <clears throat> you're going to be measuring flow. So we had to figure out, well, what is the flow rate for a syringe? <clears throat> And what you're looking at here is just one <clears throat> scatter plot of a study that we ran at ASA in 2013 involving 35 anesthesiologists, 15 nurses, collecting 570 bolus injections. And these are all plots with flow rate on the vertical, time on the horizontal. On the next page, I'll show you a closer look at these. But one of the really enlightening things, and by the way, looking at them from, this is 1ML asked to give a slow push, 1ML nominal, 1ML fast. This is 5ML, 10ML, 20ML. So each physician pushed 1ML, 5ML, 10ML, 20ML syringes, slow, nominal, and fast. Nurses did the same thing, but also included 3MLs. So we ended up with 570 of these plots to analyze. And looking at these two, you can appreciate here, <clears throat> for example, is a, is a typical curve. And by the way, this other line shown here, this is cumulative volume dose accuracy. This one peaks out at about 250 milliliters per minute <clears throat> um, and, and takes about 400 milliseconds. This curve over here peaks out at about 35 um, mLs per minute and took a little over two and a half seconds. <clears throat> so you can see there's incredible variation. And really studying this and working through the challenges and picking the dynamic flow range was, was a critical aspect of success. 
And for the first release of the product, we've zeroed in on a flow range of 10 mLs per minute to 400 mLs per minute. And we're continuing to work on expanding that in both directions over time. <clears throat> These are performance characteristics um, spec for the system. Volume accuracy, and this is <clears throat> very similar to the way that infusion pumps are spec, where in real small volumes, so it's plus minus 5% for boluses greater than 1 ml up to 55 mLs, which are the large, it'll work for any syringe size, and it's plus minus 5% across the temperature range, viscosity range, et cetera. For very small boluses between 0.4 and 0.1 mL, it's plus minus 20%. <clears throat> and we don't recommend it for boluses under 1 mL, but you can certainly measure them. And if you do deliver a bolus that is below this range, the system will simply identify that and it'll prompt you to confirm the dose you gave or manually override it and you just enter in the numbers. Just a few other things I want to highlight. It looks, um, some people look at the port and think, wow, there must be a lot of dead space in there. There's not. It's actually less than uh, 0.3 mLs. <clears throat> um, battery life on a single charge is about 24 hours with 100 injections. <clears throat> We've won a number of um, international design excellence awards for this. In 2015, we were awarded the Frost and Sullivan North American Award for um, medication management technologies. And I'm um, happy to say that just a couple months ago, we won the medical device, medical design excellent award um, <clears throat> in the anesthesia or OR anesthesia area. Um, lastly, in wrapping up here, I mentioned syringe labeling systems. We do have our own system that can be used for filling syringes and also applying that encoding around the lure tip. <clears throat> so the way this works is during the filling process, there's a, a barcode reader here. You scan the vial, automatically reads it, announces drug and concentration, shows you the label. Then you take the syringe, which you filled using normal technique, place it in, there's a little <clears throat> uh, port here in the top. You place it in there. Hit start, grabs a syringe, spins it around, automatically applies the encoding, and spits out the barrel label. And the whole process takes a couple of seconds. This can be used at the point of care uh, by anesthesiologist, or it can be used in the pharmacy. <clears throat> the encoding that gets applied is a barcode. It's about a little under three millimeters squared. It's one barcode replicated multiple times around the lure tip, and we read it multiple times as we're um, attaching that syringe um, onto the port. <clears throat> and as you saw in the video, it also works with unencoded syringes. So if you have, you have most of your syringes are encoded, but you want to draw something up from a vial, no problem. You draw it up, attach it to the port, automatically identifies there is no barcode here, and it will bring up a list that you have programmed for that care area of your most frequently used medication concentration pairs. You simply touch the one that you want um, and hit save, and you get all the same capabilities. This list will show you the most frequently used, but if it's not shown on the list, you actually have access to the entire hospital formulary, so you can give any drug that's available. And um, <clears throat> Dr. Whitaker had talked about compound pharmacies. He had showed some pictures um, of medications from Pharmedium. In the United States, there are actually two large nationwide compounding pharmacies. One of them is Pharmedium. The other one is called CAPS. It's the division of B. Braun. And we recently formed a partnership with, with them and um, just recently issued a joint press release showing that we are working together to offer a portfolio of over 20 different um, pre-filled syringes that come with IntelliPort encoding covering a range of syringe sizes, drugs, and concentrations. So um, <clears throat> we want, we too believe in pre-filled syringes. We believe this technology is gonna help drive the adoption of pre-filled syringes and vice versa. And um, we think this partnership, we wanna do everything possible to make this as easy as we can for our customers. <clears throat> so thank you very much.